Hi, little Isaac. Grandma Suzanne again, and now we're going to read this book. Okay. It's called Fair, Brown, and Trembling, an Irish Cinderella Story. And there's the picture on the cover. This is the was on the in the stack at, from the library of from faraway lands, and it's bound to be good because it looks like they're dedicating this to a little cat, because it says to Nikki with love, and there's a little cat's picture there. Fair, brown, and trembling: an Irish Cinderella story, by Jude Daly. It's kind of cool is that your first Cinderella story is going to be this Irish one, because I don't think you've heard the other. Good. Once upon a time, high among the green hills of Erin, there stood a castle. In it lived a widower and his three daughters, fair, brown, and trembling. Well, that's interesting. That's their names. Fair and brown always wore new dresses to church on Sundays. Trembling stayed at home. You must do the cooking, said her sisters, but the real reason they would not let her out of the house was because Trembling was very beautiful, and they were terrified she would marry before they did. Well, do we have an old story or what? These days, marrying happy is a little more important than marrying fast. Just saying. Okay, now here's another picture. And look at these beautiful old gowns that they have. I'm sure that's of absolutely no interest to you, but nonetheless, these are the pictures. So these are the ones I'm showing you. So you can see that there's the, the cat by the fire, and then there's the fire with the pot above it, and she's stirring and working in work clothes, and they're going out to church or wherever in fancy clothes. Aha. Uh -huh. One Sunday morning, when Fair and Brown had gone to church, the old henwife came into the kitchen. It's at church you ought to be, young woman, she said. How can I, said Trembling. I have only these clothes, these old clothes, and what if my sisters were to see me there? They'd never let me out again. Well, said the henwife, you've always been kind to me, so now I'll give you a dress finer than they have ever seen. What will you have? Trembling thought this was a splendid game. Oh, she said, a dress as white as snow and green shoes for my feet. The henwife clipped a piece from Trembling's old dress. Then, putting on her cloak, she muttered some strange words. There's the henwife with her hens, the cat who's playing with them. She's talking to Trembling. And she takes a piece of her uh, dress, also called a cloak, and said a few, some strange words. Oh, her cloak is the cloak of darkness that she wears to cover herself when she does the strange deed. And the next moment, she was holding out a lily white gown and the prettiest pair of shamrock green shoes you ever did see. Interesting. Magic. Trembling couldn't believe her eyes. She laughed with delight. Then she dressed herself in her beautiful new clothes. When she was ready, the henwife led her outside where a milk-white mare stood saddled and waiting. A mare is a female horse. A word of warning, said the old woman. Do not go inside the church door. And the moment the service finishes, ride home as fast as the mare will carry you. 
Trembling thanked her. Then she climbed on the mare's back and rode off. Wonder why these stories always have a caution. Cinderella being back by midnight. Garden of Eden and the apple. Okay, let's see what happens. I can't turn the page fast enough. I'm so excited. In church that morning, everyone kept turning around to stare at the beautiful woman standing in the doorway. As soon as the mass ended, Trembling hurried away. Some of the young men tried to overtake her as she rode off, but in vain. Trembling outstripped the wind as she galloped home on her milk-white mare. Outstripped the wind. What a great way of saying that she went very fast. She outstripped the wind on her great, on her milk-white mare. The henwife had dinner all ready, and by the time her sisters came home, Trembling was back in her old clothes. Have you any news? asked the henwife. Indeed, they replied. We saw such a fascinating woman at the church door. All the men, from the king down to the poorest beggar, wanted to meet her. Her dress was like any we have ever seen. They didn't even know it was their own sister. Fair and Brown <coughs> were impatient to find a dress just the same, but such fine cloth, cloth was nowhere to be found in the land of Erin. They were looking all over so they could get dresses just like the one that their sister had worn. They didn't even know it was their sister. The next Sunday, when Fair and Brown had gone to church, the henwife came in and asked, Will you go to church today? I would, replied Trembling, if only I could. What will you wear? said the henwife. Oh, the finest black satin entered answered trembling with scarlet shoes. And what color shall the mare be? asked the henwife. So black and glossy that I can see myself in her coat, said trembling. Once more the henwife put on her cloak of darkness and the next moment she held out a rippling black gown and red shoes to trembling. Now look at the top picture. Those are the two sisters wearing white so they can be like that beautiful woman dressed in white the week before who was their sister and they didn't know that. And this is is now with her in her black dress going to the church. And here's the picture of her at the church door. Remember, she's not supposed to go inside. In church, everyone was curious to know who the woman in black at the church door could be. But just as before, Trembling slipped away at the end and was home before any man could stop her. The henwife had dinner ready, and Trembling was back in her old clothes when her sisters got home. What news today? said the henwife. We saw the strange woman again, they said, and none of the men noticed our dresses. They were all too busy gazing at her. Fair and brown hunted high and low for a black dress just the same, but such finery was not to be found the length and breadth of Erin. Look at the picture with the two sisters in their white dresses copying what their uh, sister Trembling had done the week before, but everybody's paying attention to the woman in black at the back of the church at the door. When the third Sunday came, Trembling asked the hen white for a dress with a snow white bodice and rose red skirt and a cape of mossy green. She wore a hat trimmed with red, white, and green plumes, and on her feet were little blue slippers. I take a note, notice of 
this dress, the white bodice, the little blue slippers, and the hens with their little chicks. That's what it's like here. The hen with her little chicks everywhere she goes. They jump on her back. They're everywhere she is, they are. And right now they're in a small space um, at one corner of that little hen, hen box house. But they can be in the whole thing because it's safe. And eventually they'll be outside. Back to the story. That mo mo morning, she rode a white mare decorated with blue and gold diamonds. By now, news of the mysterious young woman had spread far and wide. Princes from north, south, east, and west crowded into the church, each hoping for her hand in marriage. The mass ended, and Trembling was already up on her mare, ready to race away ahead of the wind. But the prince of Imania, who had stayed outside the church during the service, reached out as she passed by and pulled off her slipper. Trembling rode fast home faster than ever. When her sisters came home and she was back, well, when her sisters came home, she was back in her old clothes, hard at work. And what news today, said the henwife. Today, said the sisters, the strange woman came to the church again. Her dress was ever more splendid than before. And such colors. She is the most beautiful woman ever seen in Erin. Look at this picture with all the people coming from far and wide to see this beautiful woman that they've been hearing about. So many. This is the scene with her, with the prince taking off her slipper as she's riding by quickly. Nowadays, <clears throat> women wear riding boots. <clears throat> the Prince of Amania made an announcement. He proclaimed that he would marry the lady whose foot fitted the slipper, whoever she might be. But all the other princes wanted to marry the mysterious woman, too. Let us fight for her they said. Very well, replied the Prince of Amania, but first we must find her. They traveled all over the land searching. Many hopeful ladies tried on the little blue slipper, yet though it was neither too large nor too small, somehow it never quite fit. I shouldn't leave this thing. One woman even cut off her big toe, but it was no use. That wouldn't happen. When Fair and Brown heard about the prince's search, they spoke of nothing else. And when Trembling said, maybe it's my foot the slipper will fit, they jeered. How stupid you are. Still, when they heard that the princes were coming to their house, they locked trembling in a cupboard. Well, they're splendid little ladies, aren't they? The prince of Amania with his companions came and offered the slipper to each sister in turn. They tried and tried, but it would not fit. Are there other young women in the house? asked the prince. There is one, cried a faint voice from the cupboard. Oh, her, said the sisters. We just keep her to clean up the ashes. Which, by the way, is where the name Cinderella comes from. Cinders are ashes. But the princes refused to leave until Trembling had tried on the slipper. So unwilling, the two sisters let trembling out. And notice what they're wearing. They're trying to dress each week like 
the mysterious woman, their sister dressed the week before. And it doesn't look quite the same when they do it. Here's another picture of them with the red dress, the white bodice, and the blue slippers trying to be like the other woman, their sister. She took the little blue shoe and slipped it on her foot. It fit perfectly. The Prince of Emania gazed at Trembling and said, Yes, it was you I saw outside the church. And everyone agreed that she was the mysterious woman. But now we must fight for her, said the other princes. They went outside. A prince from Lochlin stepped forward, and the struggle began. And what a terrible struggle it was. They fought for nine hours before the prince from Lochlin gave up his claim and left the field. Next day, a Spanish prince fought for six hours before yielding his claim. On the third day, a Zulu prince fought for six hours, then retired defeated. But on the fourth day, no more princes came forward, and it was decided that Trembling should become the Prince of Emania's Bride. So the Prince and Trembling were married. In time, they had 14 children and they lived ever after in great happiness. Let's take a look at all these children. Boy, can't turn the page sometimes. As for fair and brown, they were put out to sea in a barrel with provisions for seven years and were never seen again. Oops, we're at 17 minutes. I went a little bit over. Well, that was Cinderella, an Irish version of the tale. I will sign off quickly because I've taken 17, almost 18 minutes. I love you, little guy. Have a splendid day. Bye-bye.